Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Thursday, January 27th, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. We have all the models to share with you about the bomb cyclone about to hit the Northeast, and we're keeping a close eye on Elon Musk's rocket as it's about to crash into the moon with a boom. Keep calm. It's boom time. A bomb cyclone with the power of a hurricane will unleash snow in blizzard-like conditions this weekend. And the, well, the picture is amazing. Now, the problem is that this is a nor'easter and confidence, well, it's hard to come by with the models shifting rapidly. But the models are agreeing that there will be some snow on the coast and the coast with, and the area with the most snow will be Boston, the tip of uh, Massachusetts and down east Maine. It's insane. We'll get to the models in just a minute. All about the high impact winter storm. It could bring up to two feet of snow and definitely heavy winds and blizzard conditions to some regions. And there is a little preliminary snow range forecast. And you can see that heavy strip from Bangor to Boston and then east. So Chatham could get buried. Uh, and we will check the models in just a moment. So bear with us. But let's just see what they're saying here. They're saying that it is a bomb cyclone the size of a hurricane. Um, so I pulled up the Sapford Simpson, Simpson scale here, and there's the storm. So what we're going to do is just walk this through the models. We've got the 12Z up here, and this will show that nor'easter coming up. And you can see 974 millibars there, 967 as it bombs out right by Maine in uh, the tip of Bo Boston there. 967 for the low puts this at Cat 3, Cat 2, Cat 3 hurricane status. And that is what we're looking for for this powerful nor'easter. Now, blizzard conditions could be possible. And this guy looks very concerned looking over at that low-pressure system, and you should be too. Now, the system producing this just moved out of the eastern plains and dumped, well, considerable amounts of snow. Ho, ho including uh, up to two feet in some areas. Crescent Village got 12 inches, Burlington 20 inches, Bethune 23 inches, Denver picked up four and five inches, the Denver region. But this is a moist storm. It's going to pick up more moisture as that low moves across the country, dips out over the northeast. And behind the storm, it's cold. Arctic temperatures led to 150 frozen water mains in Detroit alone. So heads up. Cold weather behind this system. Schools canceled on Wednesday due to extreme cold in Illinois or Indiana, one of those places. Now, the blockbuster nor'easter is on track to bury Boston with heavy snow, but few other regions. And we're going to just show you first the GFS model here, which shows almost no snow up the northeast corridor at all. Just small amounts of snow uh, coming into Pennsylvania. Maybe some heavier snow in the West Virginia mountains here, but if you're on the Jersey coast, South Jersey, the Delmarva could be picking up some heavy snow, Southern Delaware, uh, as well as Rhode Island, Massachusetts, maybe Eastern Connecticut and Long Island, as well as down East Maine. It's insane. Halifax is going to be the big boom, according to the GFS model. Now we're going to bring this in for you, and this is the icon showing a little heavier snow a little further inland. So you can be seeing heavy snow, according to the icon, all the way towards Philly, where in Philly they could pick up five or six inches and South Jersey would be the big winner. But here you see the heavier marks there down on Maryland and in Delaware there on the coast. The icon model showing uh, half of Connecticut here getting some heavy snow and then half of Massachusetts with a big balmy area, 16 or to 18 inches in, in the Boston area. And another bullseye down East Maine here. It's insane. On the coast, also some heavy snow. So that's the icon model. And then we'll bring you over to the C. Uh, that was the icon. We just looked at it. We'll now look at the CMC. And that's showing heavy snow offshore everywhere with more moderate snow onshore. So that's showing a heavy swath of 6 to 10 inches up the coast with more widespread snow in Maine, but still not very significant according to the icon of uh, the CMC. And then we'll just end with the GFS model here. That's showing those small little pockets of heavy snow, tip, tip of Massachusetts and Boston and the tip of down east Maine with some heavier snow in South Jersey in Delaware and Maryland, Eastern Maryland there. So heads up, those are the models. 
And around the world, we're seeing other records. Russian Marathon hits a record low of minus 53C, the coldest it was ever run. Ottawa's record cold January. Parts of Turkey see the first snow since 1993. Greece's worst snowstorm since 1968 just occurred. And Montenegro suffers its coldest temperature ever as the Arctic sea ice extent is the highest in modern history because they erased <laughs> everything before um, the new century. It's insane. So now we have to use the global warming data sets. Seismic update. We have some pretty big activity in Tonga because of the one of the largest and most unique eruptions to happen on Earth that were, was ever witnessed, certainly the highest. And one of these is uh, an aftershock of that event. This 5.0 is right over Honga Tonga. The rest is probably just adjustments in the lith lithosphere, in this case, the seafloor, after that huge explosion. Now, we do have a couple other interesting quakes, one up here in the Great Lakes, right there, and on the tip of Greenland, of all places. So, some unique seismic activity happening today, but nothing deadly. Amber and volcano in Vanuatu, increasing activity. The volcano alert was raised to two. Yesterday on Himawari 8, I, I checked out a plume coming from Ambrin, which is just south of Oba in Vanuatu, and it was, uh, there was definitely, this plume was picked up on Himawari. So quite a big puff there coming from Amberin yesterday. And so we're going to keep a close eye on that as they raise the alert level to two. Now, Davidoff Volcano, one of the furthest Western volcanoes in the U.S. is on the tip of the Aleutian Islands, right near Russia. And I'm sure Sarah Palin can see it. But seismic swarm and volcanic alert level raised to yellow. Now, the interesting thing about Davidoff is that we know very little about it. And if we come over here to the major data set at the Smithsonian and the Global Volcanism Program, if you click on Eruptive History, it's going to tell you that the Global Volcanism Program is not aware of any Holocene eruptions from Davidoff. So it hasn't erupted since the Younger Dryas in about 10, 12,000 years. The volcano has had large eruptions of VEI-4 or greater prior to 10,000 years, potentially. So go get that data yourself. Very little is known about Davidoff except that it did have a seismic swarm uh, about a year ago. And now it's the same thing happening once again at Davidoff. So keep close eye on Davidoff, the unknown volcano. Ozone pollution causes 63 billion in staple food crop losses. This is not the ozone that's created uh, up near space. You know, the one that was going to kill us all because it, it, we had a hole in it. This is the ozone caused by actual pollution. Um, and factories that are making this ozone. So in highly populated areas, there's ozone pollution, and it's not supposed to be in the atmosphere. It's supposed to be way up high above the stratosphere. And the ozone, in fact, um, that is down at the surface in the atmosphere kills people and it kills crops. In fact, 63 billion in staple food crop losses, the study finds. Links will be below. Now let's talk about sudden impact. Giant Elon Musk rocket is about to crash into the moon after seven years of chaos. And it will be the first piece of space junk to hit the moon ever that anyone's aware of. Thanks, Elon. And it'd be interesting because the moon is so close. If it hits well, we can, where we can see it, well, we'll be able to see it. So that'll be fun. Eyes to the sky. Third leading cause of global death is likely not what you think. And in fact, it kills just as many people as the poof. 4.9 million deaths associated with bacterial antimicrobial resistance in 2019 alone. Yet we weren't locked down and we weren't forced to wash our hands or any of that. Read the article if you're interested. More fear, just less restrictions. Tug of war between Earth, Moon, and Sun could be driving tectonic plate movements. Researchers say that heat within our planet is not sufficient to move the plates. Well, maybe we're just in a cosmogenic time where there's not enough heat in the planet and it's heating up. That's what we think. As the magnetosphere wanes on the Earth, more energy through Berkeley currents can come in through the poles and they can heat the core and they can get that plate tectonic conveyor belt moving. Are you grooving? New research strengthens link between glaciers and Earth's puzzling great unconformity. The one that's found at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and in many other places around the world, including the U.S. The entire East Coast, we have a great unconformity and in the West Coast, we have one as well. And the fact are that a new type of technique uh, used in dating has pretty much concluded that the time period called Snowball Earth from 700 to 635 million years ago 
eroded up to 13 miles of sediment off the surface, like a grinder, creating the great un unconformity. And so these are the two guys responsible for that graduate work, which is kind of awesome. The one dude on the left is an associate professor. That was my title at Temple. And this guy is uh, a postdoc fellow, potentially. But certainly both of them are actual scientists and researchers. And I tend to believe what they say here. So read the article. It'll be linked below. We got a bunch of other cool stuff to go before we end up. Here is the solar cycle progression for solar cycle 25, which is appearing to be a little earlier than the prediction. But don't get your panties in the bunch. Take a look at cycle 24, for instance. Within the first two years, it went from zero to 150. And we are now in the first two years, and we're only, well, at about 70. So this could come way down. And you see how this went way up, but then way down? Yeah, so this, don't read anything into this. Um, at this point, we will know by 2024 what's going on, or at least in one year from now. So that is the solar cycle progression. Still a very quiet sun. Now, Etta Carinae's epic supernova explosion comes to life in a new visualization. Data from three space telescopes help tell the story of the impending supernova. And the graphics are fantastic. Let's take a look. These are NASA's observations of Etta Carinae. And it's just a fantastic uh, supernova explosion that we've been able to, using all these new telescopes that are shooting up into space, to remove some of the dusts and get images like we've never seen before. It's absolutely fantastic. And this isn't even the good video. So there's that. And then we're going to come into different light spectra. They're going to show it in here. And so at the center there, the glowing center is a star, one of the biggest stars in the Milky Way galaxy that exploded. And in fact, it exploded back in the 1800s and was so bright, it was the brightest star in the night sky. Did you know that? It's been dimming ever since, but the supernova explosion has been expanding for over 150 years. And due to modern technology, we've been able to image it like nothing ever seen before. So when our sun goes boom, it may do the same thing, where the lobes are on the poles of the star, these weird rays are what hits the planets. So that very, just fantastic to take a look at it. Now, that is not the good visualization. It's the one down below here that's not loading. So when you get the article, watch the three-minute video at the bottom of the article right here, massive Ed Cadene, and it is a four minute and 35 second video. Well, let's just take a look, shall we? So here you can see here that it was during the 1840s that astronomers were amazed and after its great eruption, the star faded over the next 50 years. That's just a teaser. Then they pan all the way in and give you, well, the money shot. Check it out. I swear you will not be disappointed. All links below the video of the big boom. Now, this is unique because this is something I should have been taught in grade school, and I never knew about it until recently. Comment below if you've ever heard of this. It's just part of the plan to not inform the public about what's going on. Now, some more disinformation here. Take a look at this. We're going to do a whole podcast on this over at Magnetic Reversal News uh, tomorrow. Hundreds of mysterious strands found at the heart of the Milky Way. Now, our friend Paul Lavalette, who's been researching the galactic center and the galactic superwave. I would be very interested in this. So I'm going to email him over this if he hasn't seen it. But what they have found in the galactic center is amazing and the imaging is amazing. You can see supernova bubbles, remnants of them everywhere, all whirling around this bright area, which has huge filaments coming out of it in every direction. Now, scientists are baffled because they refuse to adopt the electric universe model and the work of 
Al Fain and other famous plasma physicists who told the world decades ago that these are Birkeland currents. Birkeland himself was the one to coin the term, and yet we are lacking any type of electricity in the study of deep space and cosmology. They call these magnetic ropes. Hello? You can't have a magnetic field without an electrical field, vice versa. It's the same thing. And in different wavelengths, you can show the power of the magnetism of these electrical charges. Absolutely fantastic. And they're baffled. <laughs> that page isn't working. So we won't show that. And stay tuned for the uh, podcast over at Magnetic Reversal News on the topic tomorrow night. Some cool and practical stuff to end up on. A lot of people are looking for wood gasifiers. There's very few places to get them, but they are increasing in numbers around the interwebs and around the world where you can actually purchase wood gasifiers complete or just buy the kit and do it yourself. We're going to leave you a link to one of those places, Off Grid 48 Degrees, who has been working on their website and their process for years. We've been following it from over half a decade, and they have one of the most sturdy-looking units that I've ever seen. It's kind of pricey, but the fact that you can generate wood gas, which is like propane, and then power generators and other things to create electricity just from burning wood scraps is amazing. So check out Off Grid 48. We have no connection to the company, just giving you the skinny. Now, an interesting optical illusion like the mainstream media we're going to end on. How many horses do you see? And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to the heroes that share these videos. Thanks to our one-time donors, all of our Patreons. We love you. Be safe. That's a boom.